organization. Of course, not everyone signs. Some players decide to attend college, get more experience, and get drafted perhaps higher later on. Others go back to their senior year for similar reasons, or perhaps to graduate college before going pro. And while this decision is sound and often logical, sometimes these players don't get another opportunity. However, there's one player whose decision not to sign over and over is truly perplexing. This is the story of Matt Harrington. Around the turn of the century, Matt Harrington was one of the hottest names in high school baseball. During his senior year, he threw a no-hitter, averaged two strikeouts per inning, and finished the year with an 11-0 record and a .54 ERA. He was ranked as the number one high school prospect in many publications. Colleges were dreaming of him choosing their school, and many, such as Arizona State, offered him a full ride. Meanwhile, Major League Baseball teams were weighing their options for the 2000 draft, and it would have been a big surprise if Harrington didn't go in the first round. However, he and his agent declared that they would be seeking a signing bonus of $4.95 million. For comparison, Josh Hamilton, the first overall pick one year prior, received just $3.96 million, nearly a million dollars less. Nevertheless, it was the Colorado Rockies who decided to go for him with the seventh pick that year. And it's no surprise that they wanted to negotiate, offering just $2.2 million. And then there were major problems when Harrington's agent, Tommy Hanser, claimed that Rockies GM Josh Burns, who was handling the negotiations, had previously agreed to the $4.95 million signing bonus before drafting Harrington. Burns denied this, and the negotiations became heated, with the media covering the story, making the public aware of some of the potential animosity between the Rockies and the Harrington camp. There are reports that the Rockies offered as much as $4 million for the actual bonus. But according to ESPN, their final offer was $4.9 million, but it would not be a bonus, rather a salary spread over eight years, with Harrington having to forego three years of arbitration. Not wanting to set some kind of crazy precedent, Hanser urged Harrington to turn down the deal, which he did, expecting the Rockies to eventually give him what he wanted. But Harrington never signed with the Rockies and ultimately turned down millions of dollars and his best chance of making the big leagues. But it wasn't his last chance. One year later, he re-entered the draft, having sat out the entire season. Kevin Towers, the San Diego Padres GM, was hot on Harrington in 2000, but missed out as Harrington was taken 7th and the Padres had the ninth selection. They took pitcher Mark Phillips, who never made it to the big leagues. In 2001, Towers waited until the second round and drafted Harrington with the 58th overall pick. This was a second opportunity for Harrington to get a nice bonus and enter pro baseball with a chance to live the ultimate dream. The Padres offered a reasonable bonus of $1.2 million, but Harrington had fired Hanser and was now represented by the famous Scott Boris, who tried to get him more. Negotiations once again stalled, and the public perception was that Harrington was greedy. According to Harrington and his parents, his agents always advised him against signing, and they trusted these professionals. There were guarantees that they would never pass on him and that these teams would eventually meet his original demands. Ultimately, someone, either Harrington or his agents, did not seem willing to negotiate for much if anything less than the original demands. And once again, Harrington failed to sign. In 2001, Matt signed with the St. Saint Paul Saints, an independent league team, but he struggled against many seasoned players after sitting out an entire year. In six starts, he gave up 20 runs in 19 innings for an ERA of 9.47. He walked 18 batters and ended up with a record of 0-2. It seemed possible he would never be drafted again. The Padres still technically had rights to him, but declared that his skills had diminished and they would no longer seek to sign him. However, his opportunities would not end there. It was the 13th round of the 2002 draft and the Tampa Bay Devil Rays decided to take a shot with Harrington. They offered standard 13 round money with a bonus, which was a fraction of the millions offered previously, but still reportedly north of $50,000, enough to help support yourself while working your way through the minors. Somewhat unsurprisingly, after all, he wouldn't go for 4 million or 1.2 million, he did not sign and continued his career in independent ball with the Fort Worth Cats, making less than he could in affiliated ball with no bonus to speak of. 
His numbers still were not great in 2002 with Fort Worth, finishing the season with a 2-3 record and a 6.84 ERA. He did strike out 24 batters in 25 innings, and one team still had their eye on him. The Cincinnati Reds director of scouting and assistant GM Leland Maddox noticed that he could still throw the ball relatively hard and was still young. When you're young, you can always get it back, he said. If he was old, I would say that it was a far-fetched pick, but I think it was worth a gamble. I'm going to try to become personal with him and find out what makes him tick. I'd like to bring him to Cincinnati and have him meet some of our pitching coaches, especially Don Gullett, who's been able to help kids turn their pitching careers around. It seemed like a golden opportunity that Harrington would be an absolute fool to turn down. His initial response, though, when asked about the potential opportunity with the Reds was to say, it depends on the situation and what the Reds offer me. Another quote around this time had Harrington saying, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who think I'm an idiot because I turned down a $4 million contract. But there were other things involved and the advice I received wasn't great. I've had to live with that and I'm just trying to make the best of a bad situation. It was the 24th round of the 2003 MLB draft and the Cincinnati Reds took Matt Harrington. They tried to offer the most generous bonus they could considering that this was a 24th round pick. It was rejected. Harrington continued to pitch for the Fort Worth Cats somewhat improving out of the bullpen, but still not showing the dominance he showed during his high school career. One of the coaches from his independent league said he was trying to drive up the purchase price. Because of that, he felt like he had to throw 100 miles an hour on every pitch. He was trying to establish that the pitcher he was in high school was still the pitcher he is today. From our standpoint, that was not the case. After not signing with the Reds, it would have seemed that the well had run dry for Harrington. He was a below average pitcher in the independent leagues refusing to sign over and over again when drafted. Harrington had not shown any kind of dominance in four years and had never thrown a pitch for an affiliated professional team. However, against all odds, the New York Yankees took a flyer on Harrington with the 1,089th pick, 36th round of the 2004 MLB draft. However, Harrington needed rotator cuff surgery shortly thereafter and was not offered a contract. In 2005, he was not drafted. Nevertheless, the story did not quite end there for Harrington as he improved his stats and velocity in the independent leagues, going 6-1 with a 2.9 ERA and 56 strikeouts in 49 innings in 2006. He was given one last opportunity with the Chicago Cubs, who signed him to a minor league deal with an invitation to spring training. He finally got to wear the uniform of a major league team. However, he was released prior to opening day. Back in independent ball, he re-injured his shoulder and retired from baseball. He got a job at the Costco Tire Department, making $11.50 an hour. Although this story can be considered tragic in many ways, with a promising young baseball player turning down millions of dollars and multiple opportunities to play affiliated baseball as a hot, young, up-and-coming prospect, the good news is that Matt Harrington is at peace. He recouped some of the money that he turned down through an insurance policy for loss of skill with Lloyds of London and a lawsuit against his first agent, Tommy Tanzer, which was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. But Matt Harrington still got to pitch and play professional baseball for eight years, including five with the Fort Worth Cats. If not for the time he spent there, he would have never met his wife or had his two children, and he is currently happy with his life, looking back without regret. It's kind of a joke with people, he said. You've been drafted five times and never signed. In order to live with it, well, you've got to turn it into something different because otherwise it'll eat you alive. It's in the past now, and I just take it as what it is, you know? It's hard to know exactly who to blame for Matt never having the opportunity to pitch in a major league farm system, but ultimately the past is the past, as he said, and as long as he's happy with no regrets, then the story is not so tragic. However, his story may be a reminder to agents and players out there. If you have a chance to live your dream, think hard before passing on it, because there will only be so many chances. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. Have a fantastic day. Let me know in the comment section what you think of Matt Harrington and his decisions not to sign. What would you do if you were a hot prospect like Matt Harrington coming out of high school and were offered a $4 million bonus, which would have been a record-breaking bonus at the time? I know what I would have done. You guys have a fantastic day.
and we'll talk to you next time.